Good day and welcome to the Warren on Arm's Length newscast uh, with me, Warren, and my co-anchor in the broadcast, Bart the Fish. Bart has just returned from the campaign trail where he's been following the party leaders around and he has many interesting stories to tell. Oh, I didn't know the Prime Minister had a tattoo in that location. Anyway, welcome back, Bart. Uh, in today's broadcast, Bart and I will be providing expert analysis about polling and some policy stuff because it's all confusing as hell. First off, the polls. Just a couple days ago, Harris Decima said the Tories were ahead of the Grits by 16 points. That's a lot. Eco said it was 15 points. And Nanos, which just the day before had said the spread was only 5 points, suddenly tripled that. Meanwhile, over the weekend, Ipsos Reid, and did you ever notice Ipsos, Nanos, Ecos? These people aren't very imaginative when it comes to selecting names for themselves. Over the weekend, Ipsos gave the Tories a 13-point lead. Confused? I certainly am. That's why we asked our expert, Bart the Fish, for his opinion. Bart says the trend lines are clear. The fight really isn't for first place anymore. The Tories seem to have won. It's just a question whether the Conservatives get a majority or not. If they hit more than 40%, Bart says, and if Federalists in Quebec hold their nose and vote blue, it's going to be a narrow majority. In the second half of the campaign, Bart says, the race to watch won't be the race for first place, it'll be the race for second place. With Stefan Dion being caught in a crossfire, uh, being shot at by the Tories, the NDP, the Greens, and, and so on, and with nobody else in that position, it could end very badly for the, the great leader, says Bart. Now, just in keep, keep in mind, Bart says, that, that uh, media polls are generally worth what you pay for them, which is nothing. They are blunt instruments, and what matters really is the opinions of the real opinion leaders, the hockey moms and hockey dads around the water coolers of the nation. And what they're saying is that Stephen Harper doesn't seem to be as scary as he used to. Next up, policies. Forget about the individual party policies for a moment, says Bart. The difference is in tone, not content. Take a look at Stephen Harper's announcements in this campaign, Bart says. The dollar value of his promises, just like in 2006, are pretty darn small. And Harper seems almost proud of that. The Grits, meanwhile, are making a lot of big ticket promises. The bottom line, says Bart, is this. The guy or, her or gal who wins in an era of diminishing economic returns is the guy or gal who promises less, not more. If the ballot box battle is to get voters to feel that you are like them, and that is always the battle, Bart says. Watch what Harper does. In every campaign, he emphasizes that he's an ordinary guy, that he's every man, that he's just like you. He even says that in his ads, that he's on your side, Bart says. He wants you to believe that. It worked for Crancy, Bart says, and it seems to be working for Harper. Anyway, that's all that we have time for in today's broadcast. That's it for me and for my friend Bart here in the Warren at Arms Link newsroom. Good day, and remember, he's not a fish. He's Bart, one of Canada's foremost political minds. Thank you.